So friends, I have Bob Foley here. You remember Bob, we call him the scarf guy. And he's brought another scarf, we're gonna talk about that, but he's also brought several other items that we're gonna talk about that are incredible pieces. But first, let's talk about this scarf right here. Show us what you got here. What we got here is, this is a original silk scarf. This is one of the first scarves that uh, Elvis ever started using outside of his personal wardrobe scarves for the stage. They were pure silk and they, they call them two sides hemmed. They're about 34 to 36 square, close to square, but it's basically the bolt. And so a lot of people just assume when they hear two sides hemmed, they're thinking that they're gonna have frayed edges, edges on the other side and they don't. It's the edge of the material that you're actually gonna see. And so this is 100% pure silk. And so what we do is, this is just a piece of bed sheet that I use on the outside for dust. And because this has been unrolled and rolled a few times for people that wanted to see it down here during Elvis week, um, the acid-free paper has kind of gotten wrinkled and stuff, and it's probably transferred some of those wrinkles to the garment itself, which isn't going to be totally bad, but uh, so we're just going to let the paper fall and then we can keep this. But to give you an idea um, of how these things are, and what this scarf, where this scarf actually came from is uh, Sonny West and his wife Judy, who he was made, married to for 40 years, were up in Elvis's bedroom. And Elvis was wearing one of these silk scarves as a personal scarf, and she commented on how nice they looked on him. So he reached into his closet, grabbed a handful of them, and gave them to her. So I'm not going to say I have the only one that came out of the bedroom, but I have one of them. So if, if, uh, if you look carefully at the scarf, it's not totally square. And so what it is, is the top and the bottom, if he was to zoom in, see the wrinkles, that's what happens when you get that paper like that. But uh, the top and the bottom have a really fine hem, but then if you look on my left and my right, there's no hem at all, it's just the edge of the material. It almost looks like... But it's a really smooth, smooth cut. Right. It's, it's almost like it was... Um, Fused pressed or, some, or fused yeah. or something right. on the edge. And, yes. I, and I don't know enough about that, but if you look at that fine little hem on the top and the bottom, but to give you an idea, I weighed this. So if in, in the U.S. we use a first-class envelope. So when we have a first-class postage, that's usually a one or two pieces of paper in a number 10 envelope, and that's an ounce. This mm -hmm. doesn't weigh that. This is wow. 0.9 of one ounce. So when you see this thing up in the air, it doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't weigh anything. So I would speculate, uh, Bob, that what it is is the roll was was like that on both sides, and then they hem the top and the bottom. Right. And it's actually not even called a hem. I was trying to think of what this is called. There's a machine, a serger, I think, is what they call that. They put it in a serger, and it and it basically sews the end of it together. Ed edges of the threads. And and I, so, I don't know that. It just out in the marketplace you hear the phrase two sides hem, three sides hem, right. and stuff like that. So that's an interesting scarf. So is this scarf for sale? It is. Okay. How can they get up with you? Uh, my email address, you could get a hold of me. I had put it, so those of you that are eBay fans, I put it on eBay and I put it in there enough to cover it uh, but I have some bills to pay him, so I, I am selling this scarf from Sonny because I have some other Sonny stuff. But I have a few bills to pay, and so I, I would be willing to let this one go. So if you want to email me, we can talk about it. We're probably talking right in the range of probably a little over $2,000. It depends on what scarf prices are doing right now. I want to look at what the auction did on some of this. So, for example, someone bought an Aloha from Hawaii stage-worn scarf with a ticket the other day. The bid was five thousand at the end, so with the fees, they're probably paying six, five, seven, close to seven thousand dollars for it. Wow! That was through that from the stage. Uh, the nice thing about this scarf, everybody hears about stage worn scarves. This was not stage used, but it came out of his bedroom. Same scarf that he would have thrown from the stage back in seventy or seventy one, but this came from his bedroom, which has kind of got a little more interesting appeal to some people. Um, and you got this directly from Judy and Sonny. Oh, well, Sonny, yes. Yeah. Back in the day when he started getting sick, then, you, you know, he had, what he did is over the years, all these scarves that he gave to Judy, he sat down because people knew Sonny, but they didn't really know Judy. Mm -hmm. And so Sonny wrote a letter for probably each scarf, and then as time went, then they would sell them off. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I've had this for a while. So do you have that letter for this scarf? I do. I, okay. And I don't so that know if would I be a part with, of it? But that would be a part of it. Okay. It's an original letter from Sonny West on the TCB stationery. Okay. Uh, so it's an original document that it's he an original signed letter and, and actually wrote. Okay. Yep. All right. 
So I will put his email up right here if you want to get in touch with him. And we've got some other things we're going to look at. Stay tuned. So friends, Bob has brought a jacket. You see it says the Elvis Presley Show on the back of it. A very unique jacket. Now this jacket was owned by somebody. Tell us who. It's road manager, Joe Esposito. <laughs> this was Joe's I'm personal Joe. jacket. Yes. You see it says Esposito on here. Now, you were talking about the difference. There's, friends, we all know that there's, we would call them, I don't know that I would call them fakes, but there's ones that the guys in the shows wore, the Memphis Mafia wore, and then there's ones that the Colonel put out after Elvis passed away that were replicas, uh, replicas yeah. if you will, of the jackets. What we're talking about now is the real deal, the ones that the Memphis Mafia guys wore that were not sold to, they were not sold to the public, at, the all. public at all. They were only Memphis yes, Mafia, yeah. internal people only. So let's talk about, you mentioned some brands and some zippers and stuff like right. that. So like the white ones that the crew wore. So Red West, his said West on his. So all of the inner circle, the bodyguards, they all had one that would have their last name right over the lapel here. And then it would say the Elvis Presley Show. So true to form, you can tell this was before the Elvis in concert, the different, the deeper years, and it looked more with that carnival atmosphere. Instead of a dot, you got the star, kind of the colonel's way. And these jackets, they're snapped, they're lined, so it's a, it's a nylon windbreaker um, with a tie at the bottom, and they have a nylon lining inside, or a cotton you know, lining inside. So it does have, yeah, it's got yeah. cotton. It's a little thicker than yeah. you think it would be. And, and these are made by Howe Athletic Apparel right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And so this happens to be, you know, Joe wasn't a real big guy, but this doesn't fit me really good, so I'm not going to try to put it on because I don't want to risk damaging it. But anyway, um, so then they went from this, and I've seen pictures of the guys boarding the Lisa Marie even in the 76 era, still wearing these jackets. So, and then they went from, from this jacket here, then they went to a red jacket, which all of you are familiar with. Most people are familiar with, with that the red look. jacket. Right. And, uh, so if you want to take a quick shot of the actual label on these, because there's another jacket that are similar to this that's going to have an identical label okay. to this that gonna, isn't from the crew. I'll show you. So this right here is what the label looks like. You can see that. Now we're going to talk about the other side of this coin, and let's go to the red jacket. Now this one I don't mind putting on because it's big on me because this fit... <laughs> This fit the big guy, the karate guy, Ed Parker's jacket. This is. That's very cool. Yeah. And so. But this is the traditional look that most of us are familiar with right. seeing. We've all, this is what we've seen. This is what we saw in Elvis in concert and when we saw, you know. Now and, what's on the back of it? Okay. So now this one has nothing on okay, the back. Okay. But it has TCB on the sleeve. It has right TCB there. on the sleeve and it has Elvis in concert here. There are jackets out there that they have put. Elvis Presley on the back. Those aren't authentic, none of those. This is the only way these jackets were ever made with the two stripes on the cuff. It's not lined. This is just a nylon windbreaker with nothing in it. And uh, a zipper, no and, buttons. And this is a zipper. I'm not going to zip it because there's a little stitching coming out on the zipper and they say don't fix it. They say leave it alone. So I left it alone. So then, but what you need to know, because this is where people get confused, if you have a real jacket that the crew wore, and there's two styles. It will say Apollo by Holloway. If it just says Apollo, it's a replica. If it, if it says How Athletic Apparel, it will have the snaps. Because there is a red one just like this that's been sold. And I, I, I bought one on eBay about 10 years ago. And with the help of Graceland people, they got me the documentation to tell me that it was not an authentic jacket. They, I, it was represented that it was given to this man by the crew. And it was a snaps with a fleece lining, so it was that aftermarket one. So if, it, if the crew wore it, it will say Apollo by Holloway. The only thing is I don't want to remove it. Um, there's a dry cleaning tag in here when Ed Parker last had it clean. But if you carefully move this down, you can see where it says Apollo. So this right here is the tag, and I've got my glasses on so I can see. But you see what he's talking about, the uh, Apollo right there. And this was Ed Parker's actual jacket. Now, there's something interesting uh, history-wise with this jacket, and I want you to show us your photograph in just a moment. Okay. I'll, I'll hold it. May I put this on? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to... Got the big Super S on the front here. <laughs> I'm going to fix the collar. I'm going to slowly point. put this on easy. So Ed Parker was wearing this jacket, friends, during uh, something. So you want to grab that photograph? Yeah. So you see that it has this, like he said, it's got the two stripes right here, the two stripes there, zippered. 
Nothing on the back, TCB on the sleeve, that's the real thing. If you see the uh, button-up version of it, if you see this on the back, that is aftermarket. That's not the real deal. That is not a true crew jacket. So he's going to bring up a photo right here that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can show you. And this jacket, the one that I'm actually wearing, is in this photograph. And this is going to blow your mind. It did mine. It blew his mind. Yeah. It, uh, and I should have printed one to bring it down, but I just, I just suddenly, when I took it out of the case. There it goes right there. And, uh, All right. So I'll take this photo. So guys and gals, this right here, this is Ed Parker right there. That's Elvis's last concert, and that is this jacket right here. That's right. You heard me. So Joe is in the lead walking him off, and Ed Parker with his hand that on his back. That is Ed Parker right there, and that is this jacket. That is incredible. It, for me, it's, it's, it's a big piece of history because what people don't know about Ed Parker, you know, everybody knows uh, when you look at the karate, uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah. Okay, Ed Parker is the one who introduced Bruce Lee into karate into the United States. So Ed Parker founded Kempo Karate. I'm not a karate expert, but I, I wanted to know a little bit about the guy who wore this jacket and protected the king of rock and roll. That's pretty amazing. The end. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, Ed Parker was a karate machine. He yeah, was. He, he was. He was a bad A, friends. Yeah. <laughs> that's, and, which is why. that's as far as we're going to take that, <laughs> yeah. but, but that's just how it is. So just, just know, now there are some jackets that will just say Holloway on them. Uh, they're real jackets, but they're not what the crew wore. They, it said Apollo by Holloway. And I have documentation from Grace on that. And if you go online and just Google uh, fake tour jackets, there is some photographs and stuff out there which helped uh, Graceland and helped me get my money back on that other purchase. If, if you want just a replica jacket to, to kind of look neat to wear it around, I'm very cautious. I, I've wore this a couple times down here. Uh, I put it on for George Klein when he was working in before he got sick when he was in the other radio booth and he called me over to the booth because if you look at the jackets, I'll just bring this up quick, like you've seen the winter jacket with the black sleeves, just know that winter jacket, I don't have one call. here, um, was never used on tour. It was issued to everybody and if you watch the Elvis in concert, you'll see where Vernon's sitting on the couch, his jacket's behind him. But the jackets they've been, the winter coats they've been selling at Grayson for souvenirs for two or three hundred dollars. Um, when you look at the Elvis in concert patch, I call it a sheep patch. The all the lettering, the E, it's all really. It looks like a big sheep. It's really fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Like a Letterman jacket. Yeah, the, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. The the patches here are really flat and pressed out. And so when I walked up to the radio booth and looked in, and George Klein looked out, he pointed at me and he said, "Come here." And I walked over there, he goes, whose jacket are you wearing? I said, oh, I got it at the gift shop. No, you didn't. Whose jacket is <laughs> that? So I told him. And he goes, why are you wearing it around? I said, everybody thinks I got it at the gift shop. They're all looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the people that are in the inner circle, they can spot this stuff so fast. So if, friend, if you do, and I'm saying friends. Well, <laughs> they are friends. We are. But so if you do come down here for Elvis Week, this is the thing. I talked to Billy Smith for an hour yesterday. All these people, they're so approachable. You can walk right up to them. The people at Graceland are really nice. Um, yeah, it, it's a great place to come and, and get to know people. And, and the one thing I do want to say is um, I don't know everything. And if you email me and I don't get back to you right away, I'm sorry. Because I was surprised in January when we did the other video. I got a lot of emails. I wasn't expecting this to happen. I told you it was going to happen. Because well, I just met you at the time, and and I just you know I googled this other lady that was doing scarves, and there's five people a day, and I thought, how many would those email me? Yeah. Two days later, I got 186 emails. Yeah. But it, it has been so much fun. It really has. Well, it's a labor of love for you as it, well. It, you it love is. these things, and what I love about it is he spent the time to figure out, and like he said. Uh, there's still so much to know about all these things, but it's important. I, I think it's important that we know what jackets are real, what jackets are not real. And, and friends, there's only a handful of real jackets out there. I mean, let's, let's be right. honest, there's not many. So your odds of getting a real one, if you're trying to buy a real one, are not very high. No. <laughs> because the people that get them usually don't let them go. And see, right, and see, and I won't. And people have asked me when I'll be selling this, and my wife will be selling it, you know, it, through my, you know, my estate when I pass, <laughs> because uh, I got fortunate enough with both of these jackets that when they went up for auction, people were so busy looking at Elvis and Elvis things and Elvis stuff, they didn't look at the stuff 
connected to Elvis, which is another piece we're going to talk about here pretty mm -hmm. quick, I think. The peripheral things right. is what I'm and calling it. And yeah. now all of a sudden people are starting to realize how important Ed Parker is walking him up. Without these people, we didn't have an Elvis Presley. And so now they're starting to realize the significance of Joe Esposito, Ed Parker, and then this is the only jacket, like you just said, mm -hmm. and that is the only jacket. There aren't, oh, there's a few. It, and The, the jackets that, well, let's talk about that. The jackets that were there that day at the very last concert, how many are, were there? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, if you got a dozen, because you've got the Stanley Brothers, so what you do is those of you that have been able to watch the Elvis in concert, or if you go back and can watch footage online of the CBS special, because I believe it's on YouTube, and then you can just watch when, so, so take, take note when uh, Elvis goes to introduce his father, and you see him walking over with a microphone and ginger and points, I remember all of frame mm -hmm. by frame practically, so just watch the peripheral, you're going to see the Stanley boys and all those. We're not talking a lot of jackets here. And, so uh, this is one of, let's say, 12, 14, 15, probably, 16, something like yeah. that. So that's an incredible piece of history. And you saw the photograph, the sundial suit and yeah, that jacket right there. there. That's incredible. Yeah. So you, you have one more piece that you're going to show us. Right. So we're going to get set up, friends. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. It, I don't want to be skinny again. I'll tell you right now. It, I'll what, work it what out. I like, why I like to have them on is I've never got, other than my daughter, she's so petite. I have pictures on my phone of her modeling it, but, you know, it goes to her knees mm -hmm. because yeah. she was it's little when I got it. So it'd be nice to see it on someone that actually wore it back so in the Trey day. Trey is going to put on Joe Esposito's jacket. Just go easy. Oh, yeah. Don't bust it out. Right sure here. Yeah, I don't know if my insurance covers that. He's showing off, friends, because he's so skinny. Look at that, the Elvis Presley show. Now turn around, Joe. Holy smokes, look at that. <laughs> yes, we'll see, though. That fits you good. Yeah, it, it does. does. It, it, you were right, yeah, with the pockets and everything. So then you throw one of them patches on there, backstage yeah. passes, and... I'm you, a part of the Elvis show. And then all you do is you stand and say, he'll be out in a minute and everything else, and then and you... Look, Dino, Dean Nicopolis is calling me. <laughs> his jacket. His, still, his, I just talked to him. He still has it at his house. I was just going to say, he Who's has his jacket. Is this that you're, I'll that call Dean back, but check this out. Yeah, it fits me perfectly. I feel like, you know, I'm going to go pick Elvis up, take him to the stage yeah, right would, now. Wouldn't yeah, wouldn't that be neat? I like the back of that. Yeah. That's very cool. That sells it right there. Yeah. Well, and that's what's so hard is because when it's in my display at home, it's displayed and I'm seeing only the front. It's okay with Ed's jacket because yeah. there's nothing on the back. Yeah. Put and a mirror back there. Yeah, it's in a big case. I'll show you a picture yeah. later of how I have it in one of those. I think they call it like a sports box. It's yeah. about two and a half inches thick, and yeah. then it seals, really? and it hangs in there on a hanger. Yeah. All right. Very yeah. cool. Thank <laughs> you. 